Let me say this also while we're waiting on the jury. Uh, lawyers did a superb job. I just want to say congratulations and thank you to all the lawyers for the job that was done by both sides. Uh, both sides were well served by their counsel uh, and uh, counsel, uh, in addition to Murray, uh, certainly uh, representing their interests, clients' interests. Uh, also acted very professional. It's greatly appreciated. That's always happened. I greatly appreciated. People can take uh, lessons from everybody in this case. I had a try case. All right. We'll just go ahead and bring the jury in. Please, Mr. Gregory. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to be seated. Welcome to be seated in the courtroom. It's my understanding the jury has reached a verdict. Is that correct? Yes, you can hand that to the deputy. And uh, two verdicts. I will uh, review it for legal sufficiency and then publish the verdict. Mr. Holly, if you'll please stand with your counsel and partner to the jury's verdict, please. I uh, will read this verdict. In the state of Florida versus James Terry Colley Jr., case number 151248CF, verdict as to sentence on count one. We the jury find as follows as to James Terry Colley Jr. in this case. Section A, aggravating factors as to count one. We, the jury, unanimously find that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt the existence of the following aggravating factors. One, James Terry Colley Jr. was previously convicted of another capital felony or a felony involving the use or threat of violence to a person. Yes. Number two, the first degree murder was committed while James Terry Colley Jr. was engaged in the commission of a burglary. Yes. Number three. The first degree murder was especially heinous, atrocious, or cruel. Yes. Number four. The first degree murder was committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated murder without any pretense of moral or legal justification. Yes. Number five. The first degree murder was committed by a person subject to a domestic violence injunction issued by a Florida judge and the victim of the first degree murder was the person who obtained the injunction? Yes. Section B, sufficiency of the aggravating factors as to count one. Reviewing the aggravating factors that were unanimously found to be established beyond a reasonable doubt, we the jury unanimously find that the aggravating factors are sufficient to warrant a possible death sentence. Yes. Section C, mitigating circumstances. One or more individual jurors find that one or more mitigating circumstance was established by a greater weight of the evidence. Yes. Section D. Eligibility for the death penalty for count one. We the jury unanimously find that the aggravating factors that were proven beyond a reasonable doubt outweigh the mitigating circumstances established as to count one first degree murder. Yes. Section E, jury verdict as the death penalty. Having unanimously found that at least one aggravating factor has been established beyond a reasonable doubt, and that the aggravating factors are sufficient to warrant a sentence of death, and the aggravating factors outweigh the mitigating circumstances, we the jury unanimously find that James Terry Colley Jr. should be sentenced to death. Yes. Signed and dated by the four person on this date. Verdict as to sentence on count two. We, the jury, find as follows as to James Terry Colley Jr. in this case. Section A, aggravating factors as to count two. We, the jury, unanimously find that the state established beyond a reasonable doubt the existence of the following aggravating factors. One, James Terry Colley Jr. was previously convicted of another capital felony or a felony involving the use or threat of violence to a person. Yes. Two, the first degree murder was committed while James Terry Colley was engaged in the commission of a burglary. Yes. Three, the first degree murder was especially heinous, atrocious, or cruel. Yes. Four, the first degree murder was committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated manner without any pretense of moral or legal justification. Yes. Section B, sufficiency of the aggravating factors as to count two. Reviewing the aggravating factors that we unanimously found to be established beyond a reasonable doubt, 
We, the jury, unanimously find that the aggravating factors are sufficient to warrant a possible sentence of death. Yes. Section 3, mitigating circumstances. One or more individual jurors find that one or more mitigating circumstance was established by the greater weight of the evidence. Yes. Section D, eligibility for the death penalty for count two. We, the jury, unanimously find that the aggravating factors were proven beyond a reasonable doubt. So let me rephrase that. We, the jury, unanimously find that the aggravating factors that were proven beyond a reasonable doubt outweigh the mitigating circumstances established as to count two, first degree murder, yes. Section E, jury verdict as to death penalty. Having unanimously found that at least one aggravating factor has been established beyond a reasonable doubt, that the aggravating factors are sufficient to warrant a sentence of death, and that the aggravating factors outweigh the mitigating circumstances, we, the jury, do not unanimously find that James Terry Colley Jr. should be sentenced to death. Yes. Signed and dated by the fourth person in the state. You want to be seated. I will poll the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be asking you each before I discharge you as jurors in this case. I know you're tired of me reading instructions to you, but I do have one more for you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the parties, the lawyers, and the people of the state of Florida, I wish to thank you for your time and consideration in this case. I also wish to advise you of some very special privileges enjoyed by jurors. No juror can be required to talk about the discussions that occurred in the jury room except by court order. For many centuries, our society has relied upon juries for consideration of difficult cases such as this one. We have recognized for hundreds of years that a jury's deliberations, discussions, and votes should remain their private affair as long as they wish it. Therefore, the law gives you a unique privilege not to speak about the jury's work. The lawyers and their representatives are not permitted to initiate any communication with you about this trial. However, you may speak to the lawyers or anyone else about the trial if you desire. You also have the right to refuse to speak with anyone if you desire. Your requests may come from those who are simply curious or from those who might seek to find fault with you. It will be entirely up to you to decide whether to preserve your privacy as a juror. What that means in sum is that no one can force you to talk about your discussions, your private discussions, your deliberations, <coughs> other than the court order. However, you are free to discuss your discussions, deliberations, or anything else that occurred during this case if you desire to do so. That's entirely up to you. The lawyers, however, are prohibited, and their representatives are prohibited from initiating any communications with you about uh, your discussions, your deliberations, and your participation in this case. Uh, but if you desire to speak with them, of course, you are free to do that. Uh, so it's entirely up to you. Uh, I do want to thank you on behalf of everybody here in the courtroom. I know this was not an easy case. Uh, we asked a lot of you, uh, but uh, we do greatly appreciate it. Cannot get to this part of the proceedings uh, without folks like you coming down here and serving, not like you had a choice. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we do greatly appreciate your service. You will get a letter from me in the mail. Uh, in addition to thanking you for your jury service, uh, there's also a telephone number and an email address there. Uh, and it asks if there's anything that you can think of that we can do to improve the jury experience to uh, let us know. And I do take those very seriously. Those comments come directly to me. So uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to send it to that email address or call that number. And like I said, uh, they all do come directly uh, to me. Uh, you will be excused from jury duty. You will have a one-year exemption now from uh, jury duty. Uh, after all this, you probably should get a lifetime exemption, but it is only one year by law. Uh, so if any of you get any uh, summonses for jury duty in the next year, notify my office and we'll take care of that for you. With that, I will ask you to remove your jury buttons, first of all. The clerk always wants me to secure those, so I just don't lose them. Uh, and Mr. Gray is going to escort you to get your uh, belongings. And uh, thank you very much, folks. Leave your notes here. They will be destroyed uh, as soon as we're done with the proceedings today. Uh, and again, thank you very much. Have a good day. Everybody else, please remain in the floor. You all can be seated. Uh, the next uh, thing we're going to need to do in this case is a special hearing. After I order a pre sentence investigation from the Florida Department of Corrections. Uh, so, Madam Clerk, if you can send an email to the Florida Department of Corrections to begin their pre sentence investigation, 
uh, Mr. Holly, the Florida Department of Corrections will conduct what's known as a pre-sentence investigation. They'll be notifying your lawyers to see if there's any statements that you won't want to make as part of that pre-sentence investigation. Uh, I do plan on conducting a Spencer hearing in about 45 days. Uh, we should get the PSI back by then. Uh, so everybody get your calendars out. Uh, how long do you think we will need for a Spencer hearing? Half day, full day, couple of days? Uh, no, Your Honor. I would think that if you set aside a, a, a morning, I would imagine that that would be probably sufficient. Okay. Let me put some dates out there to you all. Um, how about the morning of October 2? That's about 40 days out. Another, well, another option would be the afternoon of October 12. I can't speak for Mr. Schumacher, but this second is completely open for me. Okay. State. Either of those are fine. Okay. Okay. October or September? October. Mr. Schumacher, do you want to check? Well, Your Honor, I, I have depositions on another case on the second, but I can have somebody from the office. Okay. Let's set it for 9 o'clock on October the second. <clears throat>